why did the 10th schedule come? Unless we lead Mr. Ashok Sen's speech in Malas the when he piloted this 85 thing. The whole purpose is that you have come through a party seat. You go and face the electorate again, whether with that party, independent or a third party. That's the whole long and short of this was. Malas, have your lordship ever heard this happening except in some very rare cases in England or other democracies? There is no concept. I have come on a party. I will either resign or I will just leave that and fight again for another party. That was the whole purpose of this. But what you are telling the court is that no, I will affirmatively not resign. I will not go to the EC. Why? Because I am scared that somebody will disqualify me. But then what was Mr. Ashokhan enacting in 1985, Malas? It is actually a power of disqualification for changing a party. What is the purpose of two-thirds of the parliament saying so if you can simply... What is the harmonization principle that you are referring yeah. to? Harmonization is this five, a four-fold, well, it's five originally with the faction, otherwise four, are the flexibility, play in the joints, affirmative, permissibility part of the 10th schedule. And the 21A, 21B is the negative, prohibitory part. You can do all these four without doing the negative part. For the negative, you don't have to well, violate the ne negative part for any of these four. I will say even if you go to the election commission, you don't have to violate a whip. You don't have to well, voluntarily give up your party. You say, I am on principle, please decide this. So, in other words, you are saying other than those five instances, four now. Every, four, everything else is, everything else falls within the net of 10 schedule. And one more thing I am saying, that mm -hmm. 10 schedule, absolutely correct, and the 10 schedule has both parts. It has those four, it has a negative. It well as creates a whole code by itself. Harmonization means that your lordship will adopt my submission and inter interpretation because it harmonizes the negative and the positive. Now for 30 seconds, see if your lordship does not adopt the harmonization principle. The only thing a lordship will have to validate is a three-step procedure. There's nothing else for this. It's staring a lordship in the face. The three-step procedure, I want to ask myself, Malus, in which case will the 10th schedule bite? Let's Malus, be very blunt. What your lordship will do is your lordship's domain. But today, your lordship's other option, other than my option, which I am submitting most humbly and respectfully is, adopt the three-step procedure or validate it or recognize it. Malus, then how will 10th schedule apply? It cannot. And then, Malas, your lordship should be actually adopting an interpretation which reduces the 10th schedule to vanishing point. Actually, vanishes, then vanishing point, it vanishes. Every case of defection, I will say, I will not resign. I won't go to the EC. I won't merge. Merger is given to you by the para 4 of the 10th of the, of the schedule. I will not do it. But, as your lordship was told, I am the party, I am the overwhelming majority, I am the main person, I am it. I am it. Therefore, to hell with the 10th schedule. So, well as on principles of interpretation and much more so of constitutional interpretation than even statutory, this is a much better way to look at it than well as the contrary view. Because your lordship well as gives meaning to both sides and your lordship does not adopt something. What is this other adoption which is propounded to your lordships? On the high moral principle of democracy, dissent, free speech, each of my four options gives you that option. So, what the 10th schedule does is, it says, I am giving you a free speech option. I am giving you a democracy option, but within my own terms. I am not giving you a Jangal Raj free speech and democracy option. Otherwise, why would I enact a 10th schedule? See, but merger, Dr. Singh was not an option open to them because they were not claiming to merge their party with yeah, either the BJP or any other party. With respect, well, I'm sorry, right. Why not? So, merger was not an option. No, it was an option. No. They did not choose course, to exercise it. Right, you're right. Nah, that's correct. It's an option. They chose not they to exercise an option. In, an, in the abstract. But they were not following the merger route at all because it's not their case that, look, this part of the Sena that's exactly has my point with another party. That is not That's your. exactly my point with greatest humility. Then the only point is that in a situation like this, where they say that we have lost faith with the leader of the party, yes. then the only con then the only option according to them, according to you, is that you resign and recontest. No, no. no. I will stick stick to my four options. That's huh? I'll say all the four options are no, 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 no. No, no. no. What, what what do they do then? No, no. Whereas resign is one. Right. These nine people with merge with another political party, why not? But the fact that I don't exercise an option. That, that is not an option because merger means that their political identity as the Shiv Sena is lost there. But that, that, well, then in that case, if the 10th schedule says that I recognize only this path of exit of, from this room, you can't say I'll make a new tunnel to get out. But you know, Dr. Singh, <laughs> part it. of your argument is a problematic argument. A that look, problem. I'll tell you why. Because your argument postulates that if you have a dissension, then the only way you can express the dissension is to leave the party and merge somewhere else. 
Okay. They said, sorry, we don't want to leave. I mean, right. ideologically, I am a Shiv Sena man. Right. I don't want to leave, he says. He says, I don't want to leave the party. So, as per kindly argument, see, brother, no, kindly see the even if, even if somebody applies to the election commission at yes. the initial stage instead yes. of in the legislative assembly Correct. and says that we now want the political party to act. That we are the political act. party, recognize us. So, even that according to your argument is impermissible then? No, no. Because? So, because that's outside the so long as five instances that no, you have no, given. No, no, no. One of my five is easy. He's not resigned. I beg No, no. One is resignation, one is split which is gone now, one is merger, the fourth is EC. Fourth is EC. Now, whereas if I apply to EC without violating a whip and get a decision, if I apply to EC without voluntarily resigning, it's perfectly permissible. I can't be saying I'll topple first and then I'll apply to EC. So, remain a member, be a part of it and, and contemporaneously… Vindicate your principle, absolutely. Balas, I just see the reverse of it, but just, just consider how it will apply. You first topple the government, then you go to the EC. And why did you write the tenth schedule? That we understand. No, and, and Malas, also, apropos by Lord Chief Justice Query, Malas, are you harmonizing or not? Malas, one more thing. The fact that you don't choose consciously not to excise an option but does not mean you can wish away the option. The option is a constitutional option. It's a constitutional option. It's as equal to split as it was earlier. You don't exercise it, it really amounts to saying this. I want to avoid the 10th schedule. So, I will put blinkers and close my eyes to four options available. Four constitutional options, the fifth one is deleted. And I will choose a new option which is only the three-step procedure. First, disable the speaker. Second, approach the governor. Third, be sworn in. See, the negative prohibition of the 10th schedule is twofold. One, voluntarily giving up a membership. And two, defying a whip to 1A to 1B. The 10th schedule certainly does not have any provision by virtue of which there is a prescription if you do not give voluntarily, if you do not give up the membership of the party and yet exercise a right of working your remedies within the party. It, 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 then you cannot be held to be a defector. Right. And that is the whole purpose. You were elected. That's exactly the case. No, no but well, then in that case, why do you enact the 10th schedule? Well, 10th schedule is not well, it's saying that well, article 19.1a, just see 194, well, it's a very interesting article. Let me put this harmonization, which is a very important principle, in another way. What is the scheme of whole, this entire system? Well, if your lordship were to make a standard as broad as if you have a dissent, you can violate the 10th schedule, then your lordship will be uh, unmanageable. Then, but unmanageable. your argument, Dr. Singhvi, would be yes. the extreme argument on this side, which possibly you can adopt also, is that any dissension amounts to the voluntarily voluntary giving up of the membership of a no, party. I'm going to give one of the more, I, I, I'm not an extreme, the other argument is extreme. I'm going to give a harmonized answer. Immediately to that, the principle can never be Malas, dissent, I'm not happy, therefore I can go. Three answers Malas. One, well, everybody has dissent Malas, which political party? There are enough inbuilt outlets within the party to express dissent. One, that is what your lordship will always say. Two, the dissent within the party at the appropriate fora can be followed by any of these four. Three, three, you Malas, if you are having dissensions and you are not satisfied with the party system, then Malas, you will simply express it that I am resigning or doing Malas, going away with nine tenths of the people. But Malas, how will you say that mere disagreement entitles me to topple? Here they have not expressed dissent. Malas, it's not a case of dissent. I have not gone out and spoken against the party. Dissent plus, this is dissent plus plus plus. Dissent plus toppling. Your Lordship remembers I started, Malas, I think there was a Navabravia hearing. Your Lordship notices, Malas, uh, 191, 2 and 194. Lordship may not remember that, but just kindly turn to that for a minute. 191 bracket 2 is a clear statutory, uh, the constitutional prohibition in the 10th schedule saying you shall be disqualified. That's the 10th schedule comes from 191 bracket 2. Now, well, it's 194, which follows two clauses later, says, subject to the provisions of this constitution, there shall be freedom of speech in the legislature. And well, 191A is even more reasonable restrictions. Now, it can't be that mere saying free speech, I can violate, I, I'll violate, you can act within the party constitution. What is the party constitution allows? Some party constitutions have well, even appellate bodies, some have two level things. You can actually do all of it. Before you go by these four escape routes of merger, resignation, you can do all of it. 
But ultimately, if it doesn't work, you have to take these four routes. And 194.1 makes it clear, subject to the provision of this constitution and to the rules and standing orders regulating the procedure, there shall be freedom of speech in the legislature of every state. This is not much as an open-ended charter. And Manoj, plus, she kindly see the constitution. Dr. Singh, according to you, when does the governor then award, uh, order a trust vote? No, the, gov Manas, the governor has no role at all in such a situation. Governor's first answer to your lordship is when the government is formed or when the government is about to be formed. That's the inception argument. The governor will never come into a 10 schedule situation. It's a Manas, what is your lordship considering an intra party dispute? At the end of the day, what is this dissension? I don't like you. I don't like you. Intra party dispute. How does it come to intra party dispute? How does it even recognize it? Are there all kinds of feuds going inside parties? How does my lord lay down in English language a judicially manageable standard to control the governor peeking into intra-party disputes for us? It will be a thin end of the wedge. This is nothing but political party A intra. The governor will deal with some constitutional issue or something relating beyond intra-party. And how will the governor deal without any specific article, mind you, in a sense, superseding and overdoing the 10th schedule, which is a constitutional article? With 191.2, which we tend to forget, 191.2 read with the 10th schedule. Step one was, uh, as we saw, I mean, the three, the three, uh, the three steps that you told us. Just yes, for a second, I just would have to go back to it. Correct. Please. Notice of removal to the speaker. Yes. Resolutions given to the governor and yes. the act of being sworn in as uh, CM. Correct. There's one step earlier, probably one one step which you can also add there, which was the governor's trust no, vote no, no. communication. I'm grateful. I'm grateful. Right. Now, Four step the, suppose, uh, you know, notice of removal of the speaker, we are not really called upon to adjudicate upon the validity of the... Except, except in Navam Arabia. Your Lordship, if your Lordship chooses to refer, would have that issue. Navam Arabia, if we choose. In the broad... No, no, I'm saying it arises. I'm not saying your Lordship may have to for this case. I'm saying that's the core issue. In, no, no, I'm saying, well, it's, it's an issue. Which governor, the debate. governor asked for a trust vote. Yes. Two ways of looking at it. Well, the governor had material to call for a trust vote, in which case a further issue would arise as to whether he was justified in calling upon Shinde to form the government. Pinpointing, picking out a person and saying... Picking out a person, because Correct. even assuming that the governor had material to call for a trust vote, what is the basis for picking out Shinde? Second, that the governor had no material to ask for a trust vote. That there was no valid material at all That's on the basis question. of those three circumstances. That's a core question. And well, it's that goes to the heart of the matter. If I may digress for 30 seconds, Mr. Dushar Mehta was right when he quoted the couplet. But perhaps didn't realize that the second sentence applies against him. He quoted Bashir Bhadra to say, Chup rahe to galat fehmiyo aur dalat fehmiya aur bhi badhi. Usne wo bhi suna jo mainne kaha nahi. Usne wo bhi suna jo mainne kaha nahi. Malas, the governor in his letter at 326 PDF talks of a resolution to exit the government which doesn't exist at page 55 of the resolution itself there. So, he's yeah, hearing things. Yeah, yeah, the resolution doesn't say that we are exiting the government. Yes. So, he heard something. We had said, wanted to. <laughs> well, I found a more appropriate one for Mr. Mehta. I found a more appropriate phase for Mr. Mehta. Not Bashir. Bhatt. So, the only question was whether there was a valid exercise of power by the governor to call for a trust vote. And if we, but what happens if we come to the conclusion that there was no valid exercise of power by the governor to call a trust? Everything falls. Everything falls is very. Uh, no, no. Why? I'll, be, I'll be dealing with Bhaman. That's actually that's a core question. Your lordships is saved a lot of unnecessary exercise if your lordship comes to that conclusion plus follows Bomai, which in any case is. So then you, according to you, what we reinstate uh, the. the Just read, of straight away, let me just change my attack. So <laughs> let me end this first point by saying. Let me end the first point by asking myself a reverse question. What happens in my first point of uh, affirmative and negative? If your lordships were to accept their interpretation, that's a good way of answering my malus proposition. Namely, your lordship will have nothing left in the 10th schedule. How does your lordship operate both? The four step or the three step becomes the norm and will be followed in every case to defeat the 10th schedule.